So I've come to the Naonian Baptistry, the Orthodox Baptistry, here in Ravenna, outside the Duomo, to investigate one of the incidents that occurred to Carl Jung when he came to Ravenna in the first part of the 20th century. He described it as one of the most curious incidents in his life, in memories, dreams and reflections, which he said later led him to conclude that that which we know interiorly, inside, can manifest itself externally, outside. And the experience he had happened right here at the Naonian Baptistry behind me now. What happened was that he and his companion walked into the Baptistry and they looked up at the famous mosaics on the dome showing Jesus being baptised by John and they would have looked around at the apostles too in the famous dial that maybe inspired Dante with the sense that there's a spinning, there's a turning from a centre out to the circumference and then back to the centre again. And ever fascinated by initiation rites and also well versed in symbolism and ancient languages, the story goes that Jung imagined that he saw four other mosaics and they were of scenes in which water and baptism featured both the sense of rebirth but also danger. He felt he saw Peter falling into the waters on the Sea of Galilee before Jesus rescued him, walking across the water. He felt he saw the figure of Naomi, the Syrian, being cleansed of his leprosy and water. He felt he saw another mosaic in which the Israelites were walking through the Red Sea and he felt he saw the mosaic of Jesus' baptism as well, this baptism into death and emerging once again into new life. And he felt he saw these mosaics so vividly that when he and his companion left the baptistry, they went in search of rep reproductions of these images. So keen was Jung to stay with them and they were very surprised to find that there were no reproductions. And later, the story continues, Jung learnt that these mosaics that he felt he'd seen, unlike the one on the dome, didn't actually exist in the baptistry and that it was an encounter with another great figure of Ravenna, Gala Placidia, whose mausoleum is also in the city, that had led a kind of inner stirring in Jung, so that he felt he'd seen the fullness of the symbolism of baptism in these other biblical stories manifest in great mosaics that weren't actually there at all. So how to account for this? How to explain these things that Jung saw? Was it a psychic, even paranormal phenomenon? Or was there something else going on? Well, scholars have pondered this question quite substantially. And what can be concluded more reductively is that it's a combination of misremembering and of imagination. Because inside the baptistry, in the central roundel is an image that at first can be quite confusing because as you look up sure enough you see John on the rocks baptizing Jesus in the water so much is familiar with the dove coming down from above but to the right is another figure now if you read about it you are told that this is the figure of the personified Jordan the river itself and in early Christian times it was often preached that the River Jordan at the baptism of Jesus paid homage to the Christ figure. And in this image in the Anoian Baptistry, you can see the River Jordan holding out a towel to dry Jesus after his immersion. And this is a contrast with the Jordan River in the Psalms that fled when the people of Israel carrying the tabernacle appeared. Then the Jordan was afraid of the tabernacle. Now, though, the Jordan is paying homage to the new tabernacle of Christ. That was the way the story was preached and so shown in the mosaic with the personified Jordan. But although Jordan is written above the figure, maybe Jung felt that it just referred to the river 
not to the figure and so he tried to understand the figure in other ways and he might have been prompted to consider that the figure was Peter because in one of the lunettes surrounding the great dome is a quote in Latin referring to Peter drowning in the Sea of Galilee as Jesus approached walking on the water and then rescuing him, rescuing Peter and also calming the waves. Now quite where the story of the Israelites passing through the Red Sea and the curing of the Syrian of leprosy comes from isn't in the building itself but there's at least some sense in which Jung might have read the inscriptions which themselves are buried in a deep and beautiful blue mosaic and read into that Peter drowning in the waves as another way of interpreting this significance of baptism with its death and rebirth. Let's go into the baptistry itself and take a look and see whether that makes sense. So as you approach the baptistry and come through its door, you immediately see the font, the ginormous font, and instantly your eyes are drawn up to the wonderful dome, the image of Jesus being baptised by John. And there to the right you can see the figure of Jordan in the water offering his towel to Jesus in homage. And the apostles are surrounding in this great dial on the dome. And Jung would have walked in and his eyes might have gone quite quickly to the right where he would have seen this inscription on this lunette here which roughly translates as Jesus walking on the water reached out his hands to Peter and the winds ceased at his command there's others of these Latin inscriptions from the Bible this one is blessed are those whose sins are forgiven roughly and you can see them on the other side of the baptistry as well but alongside the dome in the middle tier are also some stucco images images perhaps of disciples apostles I think it's unclear but above some of them you can also see Images that look a bit more disturbing. This one shows, I think it's actually Jesus treading on the lion and the adder, but they look rather like monsters. And on the other side of here is what looks like a child being torn apart by monsters. And perhaps these images played into Jung's mind as well as he contemplated what he was seeing here in the baptistry and then his eyes might have gone back up again to the top and not knowing quite what he was seeing have concluded that the figure on the right was not the personification of Jordan but was actually an image of maybe Peter drowning in the waves maybe of Naaman the Syrian being cured of leprosy this was a composite image in Jung's mind, John baptising Jesus for sure, but also the waters bringing in other elements of cleansing and also of danger, the danger of drowning, which is thought that the early Christian initiation rite of baptism might have included the sense of death and rebirth, which is in the liturgy. And of course, when you see the size of the font in the middle of the baptistry, it makes you realise that perhaps that was part of the initiation. Certainly the daring of getting into the water, the total immersion that would have accompanied the initiation. So Jung and his companion might have looked up again, admired some of the other details, these apocalyptic images of thrones and gardens 
that foretell those who have undergone the initiation of baptism in the Orthodox faith, they would have no doubt looked up again at the extraordinary dome, seen the beautiful colours, and then made their way out, looking for images of Peter walking on the water that Jung felt he'd seen in mosaics that he'd imagined here but which as you can see really aren't here he decided to go to one of the shops so the story goes to find the mosaic of Peter walking on the water as he left the baptistry so I'm back outside the baptistry once more and whether or not that account makes sense of Jung's experience, certainly the effect of the mosaics of Ravenna is quite remarkable. And I can completely understand him seeing more than perhaps was physically there, and that itself carrying a significance no less. My first encounter with the mosaics of Ravenna was somewhat mystical. I received a postcard many years ago which shows the evangelical apocalyptic figure of the eagle from the mausoleum of Gala Pasidia, this figure that Jung felt inspired by. And her so-called mausoleum is, to my mind, undoubtedly the most amazing of the buildings here in Ravenna so modest on the outside and yet the imagery on the inside is utterly magical, utterly mystical and transports you into a different dimension, particularly with its culmination of the dome and stars and the cross, the apocalyptic cross in the centre, the centre of all things that is both coming and returning. It's, in, to my mind, one of the high points of mystical Christian art. Quite, quite astonishing. And the postcard that I received came back to my mind the first time I visited the mausoleum. Because as I looked, I saw this figure of the eagle paying homage to the cross at the center. And it was quite an astonishing moment. I felt somehow that this image, this building had called me. As I'd remembered this postcard, I kept it, somehow recognizing how amazing the figure was. And here now I was standing before it. it. It felt like the image spoke to me. And so I can understand how Jung, porous as he was, powerfully intuitive as he was, educated as he was too, to understand symbolism and Latin, ancient language, how he could easily have seen more than meets the eye in these astonishing mosaics, in these amazing buildings and felt that he'd had a revelation that then became the story of him seeing mosaics that, okay, don't physically exist here in Ravenna, but the most that do are so tremendous, so awesome, and of course designed to evoke all sorts of imagery and experience in you. So maybe Jung's response was actually the correct one. These mosaics did speak to him. He did see something tremendous in the beautiful light, the blues, the golds, the tremendous work of these ancient Christian symbols. <laughs>